Okay. <laughs> you know, welcome to the program. <laughs> Hello. How did you get into arts? Into arts. Well, it's actually all my husband's fault. Okay, let's blame it on the guys. Always got to blame it on the guys. Yeah, right. Yeah. He was. He got involved with the radio plays. Yes. And through him, I did. Right. And then through him, he wanted to help at the radio station over here. At right. Star. Mm -hmm. So one day I got a call saying, you're going to be a DJ. And I said, how did I get involved with this? Right. So all of a sudden, I'm a DJ over there. Mm -hmm. So through that, then I started helping at the Crichton through mm -hmm. Hairspray and sure. loved it and mm -hmm. want to continue being mm -hmm. involved in the arts. But you didn't do this like in high school or in um, high any, in any time? College? Not college. Um, elementary school, fifth grade. Yeah. You know, um, did a few things there and then sure. choir and then it just built through that through school and mm -hmm. drama classes. And but you gave it up. I didn't give it up. I don't ever think I had it. I just... <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have it. <laughs> it was just something I did. I enjoyed. Right. Um, I enjoyed the writing behind it more than the participating in a play. When you say writing behind it, you enjoyed writing? Mm -hmm. Really? Uh, okay. Uh, uh, second grade, my teachers told me we had to write something, the right mm -hmm. play, and so I did for my little classmate and I. Sure. And before you know it, all the classes were coming in to watch the play I created. Right. And from then on, I thought, I want to write. Wow. So I just started writing, and uh -huh. that's my passion more than like being on stage singing. Mm -hmm. um, I've played the guitar and piano. That's fine, but that's I, I'd rather be behind the scenes writing than participating. Really? Yeah. What is it about writing? Creating. Creating. Creating the illusion that whatever you're writing is real. It's real. So are you into fantasy? What kind of genres? Mm, yeah. Let's see. I'm more into poetry. Uh, Poetry, okay. uh, emotional writing, mm -hmm. um, plays. Um, I had to do one for church years ago. Sure. And I didn't go, set out to do a play for church. It just became a play. I had a lesson plan I had to teach, and I made sure. it into a play. Right. And it was biblical. And, and I just, instead of reading the kids the story, I had sure. them create the story. Right. And we were pretending we were uh, at the moment, but a newscaster. Okay. And so they were interviewing the yes. crowd as Jesus walked by. Sure. So I created that play so they could live it. Uh -huh. They had fun living it. I had fun writing it. Right. So it can be historical. It can be mm -hmm. emotional. It could be my own thoughts that put in, or right. put in the words. Mm -hmm. um, the play I did in second grade was more like a today's drama class where you have to get up there and act and do something. So sure. I wrote out what we were going to do. Right. Um, it was just... Um, because of school, we had to do something, and I created right. a little skit. Mm -hmm. and, and then in fifth grade, I wrote poetry, and that was published. Mm -hmm. In church in the 80s, I published some work, um, not going out to publish it. I just wrote something, and someone published it. Wow. Yeah. I cool. Did, yeah. And I've done that a few times with people coming to me and saying, can I publish your work? It wasn't something I set out to do. Nice. Yeah. Most of the time you're having to fight to get someone to publish your work. Yeah. And I've never tried. My right. husband wants me to try to come right. get my work published. Mm -hmm. I just, I don't know that the avenues to do that. Right. And I don't do it for the publicity. I do it for right. the, the emotion that I have at the time and I write. Yeah. And so, just stick it in a drawer. Well, well that's interesting. <laughs> you, you say you like uh, this emotional content or mm -hmm. this story that you create when, you, when you're when you writing. Why is it? Uh, um, because I want to get to other people's hearts. It can, I like, I take care of senior citizens. So it's not your heart. It's, mm, it, yeah, it could be something in my heart that I have witness that, right. that troubles me and I put it in a paper. Right. And then I get I want to get to the emotion of the other people for awareness right. of yes. the situation. Like senior citizen care and sure. I'm very passionate about helping them. Mm -hmm. And I see so much of um, neglect in senior citizens and I try to get people through my writings mm -hmm. to understand their people too at any age. Absolutely. And they yes. have they need love and they mm -hmm. need attention and there's special needs people out there that need attention and people sometimes don't see that need that they have. Mm -hmm. And they may not neglect them on purpose, mm -hmm. but they're just not educated. Right. And I try to put in my writings, my poetry, whatever, in an emotional way to yes. get to them. So when did you get into, I guess, helping out senior citizens? Was always as a child? I've done that, up? yeah, since yes. a young adult. So your parents it. probably did this, and then you... No, 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 no. Actually, no. My parents were very negative in life, and I promised not to ever be like that. How interesting. Yeah. 
And um, because of their negativity, yes. as a child, I always wanted to reach out to people and go, oh, I'm sorry how they are. And so I became very passionate to people yes. around me. Uh -huh. And I didn't want anyone to ever be hurt mm -hmm. by others. And so to this day, I try to encourage people to go mm -hmm. forward with their hobbies, their dreams, or whatever, because mm -hmm. I never had that in life. So mm -hmm. I turn it around. If I see someone sad, right. I try to make them happy or, right. you know, because I never want them to experience what I did in life. Did you have a role model when you were younger that you saw that and or did you pick that up from someone else or no, is that just something you picked up I just picked up through own? my my feelings being hurt and I never wanted someone to go through that themselves. Uh -huh. So from the age of three, I think I was trying to make everybody happy because mm -hmm. I didn't want them sad. Sure. And um, But what really did it was um, when I got mad and I wanted it to be written on how people are treated mm -hmm. was when I was in seventh grade. Okay. I, uh, I was pl talking with this girl. And she wasn't emotionally there. She was just kind of zoned out. Right. And the teacher said, don't talk to her. She's strange. I think she has a mental case. Okay. Don't talk to her. Don't even associate with her. Mm -hmm. Well, I did. And I saw that in talking to her, she began to smile. Right. And she started interacting with me. Mm -hmm. And I told her, I said, you have a beautiful smile. Well, that teacher pulled me up and said, don't you ever talk to her again. That is not right. You don't need to be a part of her. Don't be a part of her life. They just thought, saw her as a troublemaker. or okay. And I saw it as she just needs compassion. Right. So she and I became buddies. Yes, mm -hmm. she had a mental problem. I saw that. Mm -hmm. But I also saw through it. Right. And she just needed loving. Mm -hmm. So at that point at seventh grade, I said, I'm going to write. I'm mm -hmm. going to write that people need love, no matter if they appear to be a mental case. Maybe if we gave them love, they wouldn't be a mental case. Mm -hmm. If we gave them time mm -hmm. and respect, maybe they would be okay on their own one day instead of belittled and feeling mm -hmm. that self-esteem go away. Mm -hmm. You know, and, I mean, they have low self-esteem, right. and I want to build it up. So at seventh grade, I said, I'm going to start helping people. That's interesting. You know, when I was talking to Isaiah, he had the same thing too. He's really into compassion yeah. as well, to, to a very big degree. He uh, is. As I you love are. Him. I love him so much. And, and he's, he's incredible. He's, you know, he's he is incredible, incredible as a person as, as, as well as an actor singer. He's but, very kind and respectful, mm -hmm. talented. Mm -hmm. I really believe in him. Mm -hmm. I really do. So let's talk about compassion. Because I, I just, there was an article, I think, on CNN. And it was some, some ridiculous statistic, like one out of five people don't have a single friend, period, which is astounding. But you can, you, you can kind of believe that in, yeah, in society. I believe it. Yeah, I believe even as a, even a good, healthy mental state, you only have that one or two friends in your entire life anyway. True friends, right. Yeah, Everyone else has a little associate. You know, associate. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. I can yeah. see that, where some don't even have that friend. Mm -hmm. you know. And I want to be their friend. I don't go out to make friends, right. but if I see someone down, mm -hmm. I want to help them. If I see someone talented, like, say, Isaiah, right. I want to help him get known. Right. I believe in him. I believe in the cast of Hairspray. Mm -hmm. Those that I found that should be acknowledged, I'm out there trying to help them be acknowledged. I mean, that's why I had them on the radio. Right. I wanted people to know about them and to know the play and come see the play and right. enjoy the Crichton at the same right. time. But I believe in them so much that I just I want to do anything I can to help them. So, you know, it can be any age, anybody. Mm -hmm. If I believe in you, I'm going to do my best for you to get you known. And if I think you're being abused or hurt and neglected or any way, I'm going to stand with them right. and help them. I don't know if you saw this, but we got a really nice email about you doing hairspray. No. And they said they wanted to see you in hairspray because you had helped people throughout the years. Because of your compassion oh, towards them, and oh. they and and they and for just for that, oh. it was you were a teacher without being a teacher, you know, oh. like you know the formal title of teacher, oh. but you were and 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 apparently you've been doing this for many many years, which is why we wanted to have you. Oh my absolutely. gosh, I had no idea. And, and it's such a sweet thing, you know. You oh. go like all those years, you know, because sometimes we do things that we think are just little. Right. It's just it's it, it's it's nothing to us, you know. It's little. It's right. part of who we are, right. and yet sometimes it has this great impact on people. It changes their lives. Yeah. I mean, only realize it sometimes. Oh, no, I didn't. And people tell you all later on, and you, and you go, really? I said hello, and that changed your life? Yeah. But yeah. it's true for some people. Yeah. And that's why we do these, these shows here, because sometimes, yeah, most people have a good time. Every now and then, 
it changes someone's life mm, completely. Wonderful. And, and and you don't know who will do that. Well, to. you're inspiring others, and you're giving yes. them self respect and low, I mean, high expectations, and yeah. and you're just really building them up. And I'm, that's grateful. I'm grateful that you're doing. No, this. I'm, I'm grateful to yeah. you. Thank uh, you so much no, for all that you do all, uh, all over the years. That's been incredible. I just I just believe in people. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I see something in you, I believe in you, and I'll back of course, it, you. Yes. Know, you know, I take the time to help them. Um, you're mentioning people don't know it. Um, when I was four years old, I met this lady, and she said, "Come to Bible class. Come to Bible right. class." And I said, "No, I don't want to go to Bible class." <laughs> I was four years old. I wanted to play. <laughs> she said, "Come on." I said, "No, I'm not going to." She says, "She said I'll give you candy." I went, "Okay, I'll do this." <laughs> Sounded good. Yeah. So I went, and I enjoyed it. Yeah. So okay, and then because of her, I became a Christian. Yeah. Okay. So. Years passed, and about 10 years ago, I found her, this yeah. woman. She's still alive. Right. I looked her up, and I, I told her my name, and I said, do you remember me? Yeah. And she started crying, and I started crying, because I hadn't seen her since I was about 12. Wow. And I said, I want, I want you to know you made a difference in my life by inviting me to yes. Bible class. Mm -hmm. And she said, Tina, I was just praying the other day, saying, God, have I made a difference in anybody's life? Wow. And she says, she I, just I felt, felt like I didn't. Wow. You know, sometimes I, I think called. we do need that. We all need that. We need to know that we made a difference yeah. somehow, just yeah. in some small way, that our life meant something to someone else. Right, right. And we never know who that's going to be. Right. We just never know. Sometimes we think, oh, how, how could we have made any difference? And yet, some, like I said, yeah. it's almost like it's a wonderful life in that sense. Yeah, you know, that's sometimes true. we have to be reminded true. we didn't make a difference. Thank you, Lord, for that. Yeah, yeah right. Um, I've been a motivational speaker, not meaning to be a motivational speaker. Right. I just get on my high, high horse sometimes <laughs> and won't shut up. <laughs> so, but uh, one time I was at church and somebody had a question, and, or well, a Bible class, yeah. I should say. Hmm. And someone had a question, and I just looked at them and gave an answer, and I just said, and I got all excited about my answer, and they were all standing up and praising, and right. and, and we're going, oh my gosh! And then from then on, we, I just <laughs> wouldn't shut up, kept going back, and they kept inviting me back. <laughs> <laughs> and um, just from that, I became a motivational speaker, not wow. set out to be one, right? You know, um, but I became one, and as part of that, encouraging others, right? You know, just just believe in yourself. Believe in your dream. Mm -hmm. I always say, make your plan into, I mean, I'm sorry, make your dream into a plan. Right. Don't just dream it, right. plan it. Right. And I have taught that to my kids. Wow. And they have gone with their dreams and made them into plans. And I'm very proud of them. So when do you have time to do photography? <laughs> Well, between the Crichton, <laughs> I was going to head out this week, but <laughs> no, um, actually I go camping um, whenever I can by myself because mm -hmm. I want the solitude. By yourself? Mm-hmm. I pitch a tent. The last time pitch I... Pitch a tent? Yes. The last time I went towards Louisiana yeah. and went to Martin Diaz, I believe is how you say it, Martin yeah. Diaz, mm -hmm. um, State Park, yep. put a tent right on a slough. Yeah. Alligators came up all night long. Oh, great. My husband was saying, sleep in the car, sleep in the car, please sleep in the car. And I wouldn't. The yeah. first night I did, because right. I was scared. Yeah. But then I got to know their behavior. Right. And I slept in my tent, and yeah. my children would call, Mom, are you alive? You know? <laughs> are you alive? <laughs> are you okay? I say, sure. I sent home tons of pictures. Yeah, sure. But I do. Um, my husband and I, we take road trips just around Texas. We like to, just Texas. Yeah, just, we uh, we call ourselves uh, Texas Backroads. Okay. In photography, mm -hmm. and um, m one reason we just do Texas is because we can't leave our animals long. <laughs> Understand? <laughs> we don't yes, have absolutely. A, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we just drive around Texas. Right. The coast, East sure. Texas, North. Mm -hmm. I need to go to West Texas, mm -hmm. and I want to do that. But sometimes he goes with me and sometimes he doesn't. Mm -hmm. But um, I take pictures of unique things, not just, you know, the Alamo or not just a monument. Right. I want the back roads because I want to show the farms. I want to take pictures of people to show, mm -hmm. yep. you know, the culture. Sure. I think people are just beautiful. Oh, I just love taking pictures of people. Mm -hmm. um, every diversity mm -hmm. I like to take, you right. know, and their culture and the land that they're mm -hmm. living on. Um, I get the strangest pictures because I'm not doing just going down the freeway and taking pictures of monuments. I'm right. getting some very interesting shots. Right. Birds, mm -hmm. 
I got pictures of eagles recently that are rare that I didn't know until I looked them up, but just by going along the coast, yeah. you know. So I enjoy photography. I also do art, mm -hmm. and I love art. So um, actually, I have a lot of time for it, but during the summer, I slow down because of the heat. <laughs> Yeah, who doesn't? The yeah. <laughs> You'll see me here June, and July, and August, <laughs> and then oh I'm gone. Oh so, how did you get into photography? How did I? Well, my father, he was with KPRC. Yeah. He was always into radio. Right. And he always had a camera in his hand. Okay. Because yeah. he loved, um, well, he went from radio and then he went to TV when television mm -hmm. came about. And he just always had a camera. He loved mm -hmm. media. Mm hmm. And through him, I learned photography. He gave me my yes. first camera. And, um, of course, he had the 8 millimeter. Of course. Style, yes, you know? yes, yes, yes. And so he was the first to give me a what, uh, uh, a movie projector um, for the 8 millimeters. So right. I could play it. Then came the movie cameras of, of today. Course. And he yes. made sure I had one of those. Right. Ooh, sound. Woo. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but um, because of him and his artistry and his yes. picture taking mm -hmm. and the movies as well. Um, and because uh, I can look at pictures back today going, oh, he took a lot of pictures. Didn't realize that right. he took so many. Right. But I still have, um, we put it on DVD today, but I still right. have the movies that he made of us yes. as kids right. before we were born, the right. old radio station before it turned on television. Yes. You know, so I, he was in, worked at KPRC and he also worked through NASA. Mm -hmm. He was really into media and, and he was in audio. So I think I just followed his footsteps. Okay. You know. So you learned a lot from him. Even before yeah. you got to high school, something like oh, that. Yeah. just by following him around. He um, was a ham operator too. Wow. And yes. see, back then you didn't, you paid long distance for everything. So people would go through him and say, would you tell yes. my friend right. that I'm, I made it to town or whatever. It was a lot harder to get your license too. It's a lot yes. easier now. Yes. Yeah. Morse code you don't have to have today. No, but back then you had to know. Yes. It. Right. And he knew it. He right. knew it. And I learned it for a while. He taught it to me. I can remember A dot D, I mm -hmm. believe, <laughs> you know, the little, I still remember some. Uh -huh. But um, yeah, when I found out you don't need Morse code today, I went, yes. I think I'll forget more. Let's put up a tower. <laughs> we, and in our home in Houston, I was born in Houston. Yes. We moved out of Houston when I was 12, 13. Mm -hmm. But um, we put up a tower for her to have radio. Yes. And I mean, it's 100 foot. You put up a 100 foot tower? My father did in our backyard. <laughs> So now, what did your neighbors think of this? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I never found that out. But when they needed him, they were knocking at the yes, door. Yes, of course. You know. Yeah. But I remember that. But my family couldn't find me a few times, and they would find me at the top of that tower. Oh my goodness! So I've always been a tomboy. Always. Been, You've been a tomboy, uh, yeah. really. NRA coach. Yeah. Top yeah. skeet. Yeah. Right. Um, and black powder. Mm -hmm. You know. So I've always had that tomboy in me. Go camping by myself. So wait, we talked about radio and photography. Where did you learn to shoot? Um, living in the country, growing up, te right? Texas. Yeah. You know, my first gun was a twenty-two rifle. Mm -hmm. Shot all the cans around me, so <laughs> I was good at it too. I thought you had heard women are actually better shots than men. I don't know. Okay. I tell you what, I was doing wrong though, and I didn't know until I was an adult. Um, you go like this to your eye. Yes. And what I ever eye focuses through the whole first is your dominant eye. Yes. Okay. Well, mine was, I was putting my gun on my left shoulder thinking since I'm left-handed. Yes. But I'm actually right dominant. Really? Yeah. So you need to be shooting using your right eye? Mm-hmm. For, yeah. Huh. Yeah. I'm left-handed, but everything else I do is right-handed. How interesting. I know. Yes. Do you still shoot? Mm -hmm. I do. Now it's more of a 45 or, you know, mm -hmm. pistol and, mm -hmm. you know, I do have a double barrel shotgun. Mm -hmm. um, my husband got that for me when there was a snake in our house in the country. Yep. And I went after it with a garbage can and tried to trap it. Didn't work? <laughs> no, he said, next, he said, next time, <laughs> use a gun. <laughs> he says, I don't care if you put holes in the house, use a gun. <laughs> Found out it was a moccasin. Whoa! Yeah, whoa. so he said never do that again. Oh my goodness. So, But see, the tomboy came out. Right. And I had a pet store, and yeah. I handle snakes all the time. No so I know deal. how to hold them. Sure. So I was just going to get back there and hold behind the yeah. head, you know? Right. Whoop it. Throw it out. But <laughs> he said, he came home, and he's, because what happened is, um, I um, tried to trap it, couldn't, so we called yeah. the city, and they got it for me. Mm -hmm. 
And by that time, it was out of the house. You sure. Know, yeah. But um, it was an old country home, so that just tells you there are many homes of that floor. Mm-hmm. But um, he uh, came and got it. He said, this was a moccasin you were chasing. Don't ever do that again. <laughs> My husband went out that next day or that next weekend and got me a double barrel shotgun. And of course, I can use it. I know how to use it. It's Texas. So I was raised in, with guns. So yeah, no problem. So did we talked about photography. We talked a little about, you know, like your writing uh, passion and, yeah. and compassion. Yeah. Uh, so what did you do in college? I actually didn't go to college. You didn't go to college? No. So, where did you get into theoretical physics? When I was about 20 years old, I got fascinated by the subject of time. Okay. And um, Paul Davies had a book out on time. Okay. He said, if we didn't have a clock, it wouldn't matter. Mm -hmm. He says, or would it? Mm -hmm. You know? And so, anyway, he got into the subject of time. So, then I got to know... Uh, Roger Penrose, and, and I know everybody likes Stephen Hawkins, and all right. that. I'm, I've not really been ever his fan. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you that right now. Mm -hmm. But um, I was more Penrose, okay. and now he's Sir Penrose, so okay. Roger Penrose. But I got into physics because I was interested in time. I got with CUPS, um, Cambridge University Physics Society okay. in Cambridge, England, mm -hmm. and I got interested through them about different theories right um in that i continued studying for years and in 2000 the university of texas invited me over to work with dr trappy okay and i worked with him for a while then we moved out of austin about eight years ago so i mm. haven't really been in touch since mm. but through my years i've always worked with theoretical physics because there's no wrong answer mm -hmm. and there's so much out there to still know and learn. Right. And I'm fascinated by physics, um, about studying what could be, can be, and has been. Well, it's interesting because it seems like even in the past, oh, guys, 20 years, maybe not even that much, how much we're learning about our, our universe. Mm -hmm. And we're, it's expanding. And we were just talking about, the, uh, whether they had something, it was, I don't think it was NPR, but we were talking about that potentially 95% of, of the universe is made of dark matter right there's something that we can't measure right and dark energy <laughs> dark energy's like mm -hmm. this is awful <laughs> but but at the same time we're learning that the universe is expanding and we believe that it's due to dark energy and matter mm -hmm. that's creating it right putting the dots together though is, is, it's, a, is a job it's a job I, mean, I guess they're, they're trying to work up now some experiments to see if can we even measure it indirectly right and mm -hmm. they believe that the universe is warped so it's explaining Sir Penrose, he often said, you can be at two places at one time when the universe um, expands or bends. Mm -hmm. And he proved it with light. And mm -hmm. so Dr. Kekus, he's saying now, it's not a question if you can, because of how they are showing it by bending light, because mm -hmm. you can bend light. It's, um, you, he believes it is out there that you can be. It's just you got to do the, do the work behind it to prove it. You have mm -hmm. to prove it five times in science. <laughs> so, so it's a job. But he believes it, it's you can be, and Penrose believes you can be by the warp of energy in the universe. That and well, I mean, we could talk about that for hours. I mean, <laughs> you should see my 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 whiteboard at home. It's full of theories, <laughs> and it never gets erased. And if it does, we take a picture of it first. My husband's really into supporting me to get back into physics. Wow. He really wants me to go there again. It's kind of interesting because it seems that at, uh, at the highest levels of physics or theoretical physics, that it's very philosophical. You almost need, I mean, you know, I was st studying philosophy for a little bit. Not I'm not a big philosopher. Um, but it seemed like it, it, would, it helps know philosophy to understand physics. Well, you have to put your mind into it, and you have to know. This is how I explain to my husband. When I get into fixes, physics, I'm gone. I can't think about house cleaning, right, chores, right. Mm -hmm. and I have to go there. And you have to be able to come back out of it, too. It sounds mm -hmm. so silly, but you have to let go of it, too. And it's hard to, once you're in that zone, thinking about possibilities of what could be or what has happened. Mm -hmm. And um, today I was going over the ideal of planets that could have been here in the past. See, mm -hmm. you know, the Earth created with one cell. 
Mm. Not get into Christianity. Mm. I'm not, right, right, not right. going there. But right. so where did that one cell come from? Mm. You know, so, you know, you wonder what was there in the past? What will we be here much longer? Mm -hmm. um, so you get into that. Um, but I believe that it, this is my thought. And you can edit this out. Um, the church will not prove that God exists. It will be the physicists that prove that he does. Mm -hmm. Because what is known to man, whatever man understands, I believe, is what man uh, has created. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, if you're able to understand an issue, uh -huh. it's because it's man-made, let's say. Right. If you can't understand a situation or science, right. like physicists trying to make it all work and understand it, right. and you can't, right. they're proving there's a God. In a sense, mm -hmm. you know, so church always tries to prove there is a God, but it might be the physicist, the science that mm -hmm. proves that there is. Yeah. Because what is man-made is by man. What is unknown is by God, mm -hmm. is what a lot of scientists say. So they're saying, we're going to prove there's a God by using science. <laughs> Isn't that a switch? <laughs> but, you know, it, it's interesting just to listen to them talk. But actually, that, that that's an interesting point, because sometimes it, it uh, people want to to play religion versus mm -hmm. science. Right, right. And it's not, and it's and not I don't think it way. necessarily needs to be a religion mm -hmm. versus science. No, it's not. Thing. No, and absolutely. I've heard Morphysis say that, that it's not one or the other. Yeah. It all blends together. Right. It's all one. Mm -hmm. And there's no division line there. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's just nice to hear that the church accepts science and science ac accepts the church nowadays. It's very open mm -hmm. about that. Yeah. So I, I like hearing that. Because I'm all for science, but I also go to church. Sure, sure. So you can go to church and be a scientist, too. <laughs> <laughs> There's no dividing line. <laughs> so you say you, you prefer to be behind stage. How come you don't want to be, do anything on stage? Well, if you want someone short, compact, and with a big mouth, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> but Let me see. Ethel Merman did that. Yeah. <laughs> she did a pretty good, decent job on stage, you know? <laughs> I, like, I think I like to hide. I don't know. I don't know. I've hmm. never... Try. I did drama in high school. Yes. Um, but I've I've always been behind the scenes yeah. more than up front and personal. And maybe if I ever gave it a try, it, it's know? different. It's yeah. a question. I think I prefer behind the scenes too. But yeah. sometimes, yeah, on stage there's some different. You definitely learn a few things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'll do the radio plays because your script is right there. Of course. You know, yeah. and no one sees you. You don't have to worry about what you look like or right. your dress. Or, so I'm just reading a script and having a good time mm -hmm. on stage. You know, I don't know. It's been a long time since I've done anything like that. I think that's why I kind of like texting and phones yeah. and then video. Yeah. Because, the, yes, you probably could hear certain emotions through the voice, but you can hide some of that. You can still have a certain privacy, if mm -hmm. you will, where if you were on camera, like a video camera, mm -hmm. video conference, some of that, there are some things you can't. You can't yeah. hide boredom. You can't hide, you know, yeah. those things. There's some of the body uh, right. a language. But some, and, and some of the. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. But you're exactly right. Exactly, right? You know, so no, it's, you, know, it's I true. you think about, uh, you know, like the inventor of voicemail, and he's so horrified at how voicemail is used now to put off people. He said that was not the, never was the intent. Mm. So it's just kind of interesting how certain inventions have come along mm. with good intentions, but they end up getting used in different ways right. than we probably wanted. Well, that's true with the atom bomb. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't intent. It wasn't created for that. No, you know? no. But it, they just knew what to do with it. <laughs> it was, so anyway, that's another subject. <laughs> Let's talk about the animals. What animals do you have? Oh, I had three cats and two dogs. And they get along. Yeah, they all sleep together. Usually on my bed with me. But, <laughs> yeah, but we all get along. Mm, but they yeah. do wake me up at six o'clock. They're your alarm clock? Yeah, they're my, no matter what day it is, they're my 6 o'clock shadow. Yeah, but um, yeah, I had a pet store, and I enjoyed that, but I'll never do that again. So why did you have the pet store? Um, Good question. I worked there for a while, and the owner wanted to sell it. Sure. And um, I was young at the time. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it. Um, I sold it, though. Someone wanted to buy it from me, and mm -hmm. I let them because that was the time when PetSmart and Petco were coming to town. Right. So I got out just about that time. Right. So. Did you do stuff at Tuts? I no, you said yeah. Tuts, but no, not no? Tuts. Really? No, not Tuts. Other places, maybe, but not Tuts. Like? No, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't have to go there. <laughs> well, it's kind of interesting because it's like, is there something you haven't done yet? <laughs> no. We've gone from theoretical physics to shooting guns to shooting. Yeah. <laughs> I love you know? physics. Physics That's is my stuff. passion. Yeah. Um, when I was a kid, you know, I did some music at Jones Hall, but um, that was for the school I was at. Okay. And mm-hmm. through that, I started enjoying music. Mm-hmm. Um, I never got involved with it too much. I just became a supporter of. Right. So, so what's your favorite music style that you like? I like classical, but mm-hmm. I get I get tired of that really quick. Right. You know, I got to have something else. Sixties, mm-hmm. seventies music I like. Mm-hmm. Um, I, yeah, I like you know the uh, classic rock. Well, yeah, it's because that's what we grew up yeah, on. Yeah, so, you know, yeah. that's what I know. Right. You know, so I enjoyed the hippie days, even though I wasn't quite there, mm-hmm. you know. But I remember the clothes. Yes. Yeah, I got to participate in the clothing of it. Yeah. But as far as, I was too young to really. Mm-hmm. Now, my husband, that's a different story. He was a hippie. <laughs> surfer <laughs> dude. Surfer dude. Yeah, he enjoyed in the, he enjoyed the 60s. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he's six years older than me, so I was really not there, right. uh, you know, during that era. But the clothes, I remember. Yeah. And, you know, some of the, the clothing is coming back, and it's mm-hmm. very comfortable. I like it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Thank goodness. Yeah, I know. Very comfortable. Do you have a favorite author? Einstein. Einstein? He said, never let education get in the, in the way of learning. And he ne- ought to know. Yeah, never. Li- yeah. <laughs> yeah, he should know. He was yeah. actually, you know, right. he, like I said, couldn't tie his shoes or whatever yeah, age. But right. that's because he was too interested in other things. Yeah. It was not his focus. He, he couldn't. He couldn't tie his shoes. He had his sh- shirts backwards. Yeah, yeah. He couldn't contemplate on any of that. His mind was somewhere else. Completely. <laughs> so, exactly. Yes. So I've always liked that quote by him. Mm-hmm. Never let education get in the way of learning. Mm-hmm. And that well, goes for everybody. I think sometimes we, we confuse that. Sometimes we, we will confuse formal education with learning. And that, in fact, we do need to continually, continuously learn. Mm-hmm. So, and it doesn't matter where you get that, right. whether it's from another person or from books or video, whatever. Right, right. You know? Well, maybe I like him because I see a lot of smart people out there without a diploma. Yeah. And I want them hurt as much as anybody else. Well, I think I, we have friends that way too. He had a friend he never completed college one of the smartest well-read persons i've mm-hmm. ever known mm-hmm. just in, it, just incredible he's so well read he knows just about something about everything mm-hmm. um no but doesn't have to agree right right i think it was too boring actually i think seriously thing, it was too boring could have been yeah couldn't yeah couldn't stand it right now in my day growing up a woman stayed at home and raised the kids yeah. so you just didn't leave the home right you know so my education came through books or whatever i could pick up and mm-hmm. go from there but, um, yeah, I uh, I'll always continue to educate myself. My children graduated from college way back, but they're still going to college because they keep wanting to better themselves. Mm-hmm. So they have a job, have a family, but they're going after either the master's, PH, or whatever. You mm-hmm. know? They just, and so are the wives. Really? Yes. Yeah. Because they know that, well, as a mom, I want to know when I'm not here, yes. they'll be provided for, yeah, sure. they can provide for themselves. Right. So I push education, just Mm-hmm. Keep doing it, and they do. Well, yeah, they do. So I'm proud of them. But I'm proud of the Crichton. Oh my gosh, this is a beautiful place. It is a beautiful place. Been this lady's been around eighty plus years, <laughs> but that needs a lot of TLC, right? So oh, something to love on. <laughs> We're glad to have you here. Oh, Absolutely. I'm glad to be here. I'm, I'm glad you allow me to come in and help, and you haven't kicked me out yet. So I appreciate. Oh wow, let's get like, are you a warm body? Good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I believe that too. <laughs> I believe that too. Get, get it here. <laughs> but I'm having a good time. I really am. Mm-hmm. And everybody here is so nice, and y'all made me feel at home. Mm-hmm. You make me feel like I'm part of the family. So. This is a second home for us. We live here enough hours. Yeah, you do. You, <laughs> you and Carolyn both do. I see you that. You know what? It, it, it is the home, and you want it to be like your home mm-hmm. in the sense that people be welcoming. Come on. Yeah, come on in. Mm-hmm. Help us out. Do whatever. Yeah. It's a shared experience. You know, well, that's a good experience. Do. It's a very good experience. And I've enjoyed every minute of it. I've enjoyed learning. Because, mm-hmm. you know, I, like I say, I've never been in theater. Right. I've never, you know, I might do, I produce the shows over here sure. on the weekend, but I'm behind the scenes. I've yes. Been, you know, so I've never been in front. So when I came into the Crichton for the first time through Hairspray, right. I was nervous, scared, and made a lot of mistakes. But I was taught by Tina. Yeah. Um, how do you, what's her last Cateo? name? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so she taught me a lot. 
and you have and Carolyn has and everybody just pitched in like a family and helped me out and made me very comfortable. So comfortable, I came back to help with this play. <laughs> you got grease paint on your plug. No? Yeah, I do, I do, I do. So I'm enjoying helping. I really am. I, I feel very comfortable this time. So when do you get a chance to write again? I write when the passion comes over me. When the passion comes over you, when really? When something happens, like I can, um, something can happen today and it'll either upset me or it will either be an eye opener and I'll go and write. And you go back to writing? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll have it whipped out in no time. I can have a play written out in no time. Really? Yeah, I can. I can have a poem written out just like that. The emotion just comes out. Just comes it's out. It's like a floodgate, right? Just, yes. <laughs> it's there. It's there. And That's incredible. And well, I don't know if it is or not. It's well, just because writing, because most of the time people, you know, I see, you know, the writers, and, you know, for me, you know, look at this blank piece of paper and then it's just like, okay, what do you put down? But you're right. When it does come, it's, it seems like it just floods. It just, it's you a can't, flood. You can't stop. Right. You cannot stop. You yeah. Can't. And it's like, leave me alone. I got to do this. Right. When I did that play for the church, I wasn't meaning for it to be a play. Right. But um, I had a lesson plan. I, I can remember to this day. I went home, sat on my fireplace, yeah. um, you know, the little seat there in front of the fireplace, and the football game was going on, and I had fix fix lunch, and I fix lunch, we're watching the game, and I'm like over there just finished, just like that, just like that, and it was the emotion I had at the time. Right. So I turned it in to get approved for teaching, and they said we're going to publish this. <laughs> Well, really okay, but I still need it back. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, do what you want. And I, right. that was my first paycheck. Wow. Yeah. Ooh. Nice. It was like twenty five bucks. And woo. Hey, it's better than zero. <laughs> <laughs> that was years ago. I don't know. Wow. But, but yeah, so it, I write when it hits me. So this is not right on a schedule. So if someone says I need something by Monday, and the passion if in it's there, not there, no, it, I'm not gonna happening. Do it. No, no, it has to be in me and need to get out. Right. Um, yeah, that's how, and I mean, I have thousands of writings. Do you wake up in the middle of the night, which is something that just hits you so hard? Yeah. Almost like a dream? Yes, right? yes, yes. And my husband will say, get up and write it, get up and write it, get up and write really? it. Really? Oh, he's very encouraging. Yeah. Because by morning, you know, you forget. And yeah, I do, yeah, yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. And I'll go, you know, I had this dream, but like, why didn't you just write it down? Right. But you know, a lot of things come to you in your dreams. Yes, you they know? do. Absolutely. You, you know? Yes. And then I'll get up and I'll start writing because it's like smoke. Once that dream is gone, right. that thought is gone. Right. But there are some dreams that are just so profound. Right. You just, to this day, I remember. Wow. But um, no, when it, when it hits, if it comes in a dream, if it comes from an emotion of an event, I mean, I'll go and I'll write and it's done. And I have thousands. And my husband says, we've got to get all this published. <laughs> and I say, I don't feel like it. You do it. Maybe I'll get my $25 again one day. <laughs> <laughs> With a few zeros. Yeah, yeah that would be nice. That would be nice. So has writing changed for you over time? I get the, the emotional part of it, right. certainly. I mean, it, it comes out of you. But, I mean, you know, before, I mean, for instance, we used to watch you know, Murder, She Wrote. Oh, it starts yeah. with the typewriter. Oh, the, yeah. And, of course, you know, who's, can you even find a typewriter? Right. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you know, really, right? Right. It took me a while to get used to the computer. Right. Because, and one time I had a cousin. He said, send me your writings, send me your writings. So I wrote everything. He goes, no, through the computer. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You know, he says, just just learn to use the computer. This was back right. in the 80s, you right, know. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And I, oh, it's going to take me forever this way. Now I don't even pick up a piece of paper anymore, right. you know, t -t 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 like that. Mm -hmm. And delete, delete, and spell check. Da -da 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 -da, you know, right. <laughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I can just fly and have it done. Fly, have it done. So about the radio station. So you say you got active with the radio station. Now you do uh, programs on the weekend. Yeah. Right? Right. Which um, you said stuff behind the scenes. So what do you do behind the scenes? Oh, I go to the coffee shop a lot and have coffee. With that, I like that part. Yeah. I like that part. And you know what? They're, uh, what is it? Those scones? The blueberry scones are awesome. <laughs> yeah, I haven't tried that yet. <laughs> okay, well, you have to yeah, try, try those blueberry that. scones. I hear but... they're good, though. But no, that's where I do my interviews for people that want shows right. on the radio station. I kind of screen everything out and let them know. Right. A lot of people want to be a DJ, but they don't understand the work behind it, as you right. know. You, right. you know, I know you work very right. hard. And um, so once I filter things out, then I see if they can work the board and all that. Right. Um, I have a couple of people interested that want to do a show with me until they're comfortable having a show by themselves. Mm -hmm. And you would know two of them. 
um, mm -hmm. Pete and, sure, and, sure. and Phil. Yeah, yes. Yeah, they wanted to come over. I said, sure, let's play and yeah. see if you'd like to get comfortable. Sure. So we're going to start that, and then they can have their own show one day. I'm mm -hmm. sure they will. I, I can see Phil taking off with it. Mm -hmm. He'd have a blast. And Pete's ready. He's ready to go. He wants to. Yeah, he wants to, too. And then I have a couple of, I mean, I get right, uh, people writing me or calling me every day uh -huh. saying they want a show. In the morning, we're trying to keep that open for church, Christian, of you know. Sure. And then after 12 to midnight, have different shows. We want it for the arts, you mm -hmm. know, music or anybody in a play come by and talk about the play. Sure. Anybody in a band can come by and talk, mm -hmm. um, especially if I believe in them, I want them to come by. They sure, can play absolutely. their music, you know. Right. I'll do anything to help them. Right. So Sunday is open up to the arts. Right. Uh, my show's at 5, and then they have the radio play at 7. My, my show's from 5 to 7, and then 7 to 8 is the radio play. Yes. And then my husband's 8 to midnight. Okay. So I'm filling in from noon to my show at 5. And I have people with different ideas. I just got to get them trained right now. Mm -hmm. And then the morning show, we're leaving for the churches. And mm -hmm. I, have, I have people wanting to come by to, to do um, not so much sermons, but talk. Just talk, right. you know, anything. So church-type topics, yeah, right, religious-type right. topics, yes. Right. Interesting. Any yeah. religion. Really, doesn't matter. It yeah, doesn't just, matter. just get talk, get, get yeah. interesting talk. Because I believe everybody has something to teach us. Mm -hmm. We can all learn from somebody. Absolutely. You know, there's a lot of good people in the world, and I want them known. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of love out there. Yes, there is for people that need that loving. Yes. So I think some of the most interesting conversation I used to have in high school, there was a, I think it was a Mormon, an atheist, and myself was Catholic, and we had some most interesting philosophical conversations in a civil manner, not, you know, right, being on right, each other. Right. And, it can happen. Yeah, it can happen. And you can learn a lot about each other mm -hmm. in, in the process. And, I mean, I, I, I went to a Catholic church once, once, yeah. well, not once, but I went to a Catholic church at one time that had a Jewish rabbi teaching. Wow. That, it was beautiful, too. Mm -hmm. Absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. And um, my background is my, both of my parents were atheists. Really? But that lady came along when I was four years old. Yes. And she pulled me out of the darkness I was in through yes. my, because of my family. And um, I became a Christian through her, um, but also science. Yes. So I have a little bit of both in me mm -hmm. to where I can be both open-minded to everything mm -hmm. and every religion. Yes. Because um, I got to know her. She was Baptist, or still is Baptist. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to go to church, so I would sneak out my bedroom window and walk to the closest church I could find, go to church, Yes. but I couldn't sneak back up the window. I was too small. I couldn't reach the window. <laughs> so I had to go through the front door, and I got caught. Oh, dear. Yeah, it wasn't good. Oh. But so for some reason, I kept going. Yes. But from then on, I went out the front door, not the window. Wow. Mainly because I knew I couldn't sneak back in through the window. I couldn't reach it. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, so I've gone to every religion, every church, mm -hmm. listened to many sermons and mm -hmm. um i've been to temples and i've sure. just learned from every one of them i'd go to anybody who would take me right and they all did what's common that you've seen of all the different religions common faith they all have a faith and they all have love mm -hmm. you know I, I i think it's just everybody's beautiful in their own way mm -hmm. like the song says yes and um we all have faith we all have hope and we mm -hmm. all want peace mm -hmm. And some people get misguided yes. in trying to get that peace, mm -hmm. but we're not all like that, right. and not everybody's like that. Right. In fact, but, most are not. Exactly. Right. And so, um, yeah, I, I see hope and faith in almost every religion out there, well, in every religion out there that I've ever been in. Mm -hmm. And each one's different, but I respect it. Mm -hmm. If I'm in their home, yes. I'm going to respect their ways. Yes. And I pride myself in honoring them in their way, mm -hmm. and they respect me for doing that. Mm -hmm. So I have found all the religions I have met to be beautiful, and the people are beautiful, mm -hmm. and their food is good, too. <laughs> Everybody cooks a little bit different. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking about the party after Ramadan. <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. Because that party goes for a long there time. There you go. <laughs> and they're not just passing out wine there. <laughs> It can be a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, dear. So what do you want to do that you haven't done yet? Anything? I want to travel. I want to travel out of Texas. Out of Texas, out yes. Out of Texas. Right. I want to go see Colorado. I want to see the mountains. Sure. I want to do photography there. Mm -hmm. I want to um, 
Oh, I like solitude. Yes. You know, I like coming down off of that mountain and visiting, mm -hmm. but I like the solitude. Of Go back up the mountain, yes. I love nature. Mm -hmm. I want to have a chance in life to feel that solitude and to enjoy nature. Yeah. I would, I would like to do that. I, mean, that's, I really don't have any heavy goals. I don't need to be a millionaire. I don't mm -hmm. need to drive that Cadillac. Right, right. You know, I want to um, take care of nature, respect mm -hmm. it. Um, you know, I'm not anti anything. You know, I'm not um, protesting against anything. Or, right, right. You know, um, like save the trees or. Mm -hmm. You know, I tell you what. What's interesting right now is my children are very involved in saving our oceans. Interesting. Yes. And. Um, for just tell you this much, when they get rid of a derrick out in the ocean, they blow it up because they yes. don't need anymore. But that kills millions of redfish, red mm -hmm. red snapper. Right. And so they're trying to think of a way to have artificial reefs out there for the red snapper. Right. And to help the economy at the same time, right. to help you know the environmentalists and sure. the economy, and mm -hmm. you know he, they're trying to put it together for right. everybody. And I would like to see that too in nature. I'd like to yes. see it all work together. I want to respect nature. Mm -hmm. I respect the people that need the land too. Yes. And need to build, but I still care and have passion for the animals. Mm -hmm. And um, so I just I care a lot about nature and um, want to see you know some land safe for the animals out there. And Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I don't go out there and protest, but. Right. I want. I get to camp and enjoy it. I would like other generations to get to go camp and Absolutely. enjoy the wildlife. I don't want to see anything extinct. Right. You know. So I'd like to spend more time in nature and camping and taking pictures of its beauty and mm -hmm. just bring that nature home with me when I'm not there. Mm -hmm. So that's what I like to continue doing. Wow. <laughs> well, thank you so much for all that you do. I know you will continue to do. I'm going to ask you what we've been asking everyone else. If heaven exists, what do you want God to say when you get to the pearly gates? Um, I want him to say they have Dr. Pepper. Ooh, that's a new one. <laughs> Dr. Pepper and Bluebell. Oh, uh, sorry. Diet Dr. Pepper. <laughs> I, don't want, I don't want Diet Coke. I don't want caffeine free. I want Dr. Pepper and Bluebell. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask him. I'm going to say, do you Dr. Have Pepper, Bluebell. That, that order. What flavor? Oh, vanilla. Really? I mean, vanilla, yes. I, I like all the flavors, but I remember cranking the ice machine as a yes. kid, mm -hmm. making ice. And their vanilla tastes so much like the homemade, just really? like the commercials yes. say, the homemade vanilla. Plus, wow. you can make floats out of it. Yes, you can. You know, all that good With stuff. Dr. Pepper? Mm, no, no, you got to use Coke, real Coke, right? Uh, Not Pepsi, beer. Coke, right? That's what my husband he says. He goes, why do you have to have Coke or root beer? You can put a Dr. Pepper in it. I said, no, no, it's not, not the same, same. thing. It's, it's not the same, same. same. no. <laughs> So that's what I want heaven to have. Is Dr. <laughs> and if he doesn't have it, we're going to have to talk. Uh, you're probably not in the right heaven. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say, look, God, I'm stubborn. And <laughs> so I would like some Dr. Pepper and, and some vanilla ice cream. There's probably some time and space where there's a Dr. There Pepper. There you go. All my and, way up there. And a Coke float. There, as the universe bends, I can say, the universe is bending. Can I just cross over right now and get me a Dr. Pepper? <laughs> Bring it closer. <laughs> no. But I do like my physics. I really do. That's my passion. I used to think photography was, but really physics Physics? Is, mm -hmm. How interesting. Yeah, physics is. Tina, thank I, you so much for being with us. Well, thank, thank you for allowing me. See how easy it was? It was fun. <laughs> thank Thanks. you. Bye-bye. Okay,